Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the Notorious Christian, and I'm going to show you around with some clips today of the Roman Catholic history in my hometown of Nijmegen, the Netherlands. I went today to four different locations concerning this issue, this false religion. Uh, I went to some churches which I normally don't do, and some signs and symbols in the city and the old castle of Charlemagne. First of all, I went to the Titus Brensma Memorial Church. Titus Brensma was a Carmelite father, and he was a professor of philosophy. Uh, that's what he did in also the University of Nijmegen and he was murdered during the second war in Dachau he was against Nazism and he got his sainthood very recently on 15 May of 2022 by Pope Francis and he was a big mystic he was stooped in medi medieval mysticism uh, he was big on the lit liturgy of the church so he got a sainthood. Well, we know a sainthood is not to be given by nobody. A saint is everybody in the body and spirit of Christ. After that, I went to another church, and this time I went actually in for one exception only, and this is called the St. Peter Canisius Church and it's in the city center and Peter Canisius was the first Jesuit the first Dutch Jesuit and Belgium and the Netherlands were one country so he was the first Jesuit for Belgium and the Netherlands probably uh, let me see what else oh yeah he got initiated by Loyola probably because on Wikipedia it says that Loyola was actually present in Rome at that time so yeah you can make up your own mind about that one he later in life he became a bishop in vienna and he was present at the counter reformation in trent for two session sessions and he probably wrote some anathemas and he was big on the catechism he wrote some catechisms and he translated it into german and for more information just watch the clip about Peter Canisius. After that I went to the castle of Charlemagne and Charlemagne of course is Peter the Great, the Emperor, the Roman Catholic uh, Emperor of Germany and France and the Netherlands and many more countries I don't know by head. He had a big castle over there and there's only two ruins left and I'm going to show you around a little bit and give you some information in that clip. After that I went to the obelisk. Of course every city has got an obelisk to show you how who does rule in the cities. And give you some information about that. And after that I went to the St. Peter Francis, uh, sorry, St. Peter Canisius statue and there he gives a sign and a symbol very clear on who his master is but you have to watch the clip for that like i said uh, the jesuits they have a resting place here i'm gonna go there tomorrow i'm also gonna go to the bergmanium that is the college uh, before it went uh, university there's also a Canisius College in the city of Nijmegen. I'm going to go there later this week or maybe next week. It's all going to be in this post of YouTube. And do I have more information? Yeah, uh, actually the first stone that's laid in the elderly house of the Jesuits was laid by the Black Pope himself, Adolfo Nicholas. So he was represent in Nijmegen to lay the first stone, stone. So it was a probably a very important moment for the Jesuits. And yeah, they're still living there and other people of other 
uh, orders also on their elderly age. So, do I have more to tell you? Let me see. I had something written down. I have more to tell you. Yeah, I'll also give some Bible quotes during this uh, post. And when I was in the St. Peter of Canisius uh, church, I went to talk to the people and they didn't want to hear me at all. They were ignoring me. Yeah, they were ignoring me. That's, that's about it. So I told them, you know, you have eyes, but you don't see and you have ears, but you do not hear. And that's what Jesus told. And I said to them, you know, I'm going to pray for you. Maybe your eyes and ears will be opened. Because I don't want anybody to go to hell. I was a sinner myself. There's also a house called Favre. And that house is named after Peter Faber. An important Jesuit. And there's also a location on the Graafse Weg. But I don't think that's actually in use anymore. Because I went there one time and there were students living there. But I can go there another time. Let's see how it plays out. The superior Jesuit for this region is called Peter de Smet and he's located in Antwerp. And yeah, that's about it, the information I wanted to give you right now. If you want more information, just watch the clips and I hope you enjoy uh, that you uh, found this information useful. And if you want to learn more about these people and what they did, I put in the description all the links. Then you can read it for yourself and make yourself wiser because we need to uncover all evil. And evil is of course the Antichrist Pope, the biblical, the prophetic and the historic Antichrist of this world the Pope in Rome and his henchmen, the military order of the Jesuits, the New World Order Agenda 230, WEF leaders, because the Jesuits are behind the WEF, of course. Spread the word around to the people. The more people we can reach, the better. And of course, uh, keep in mind, always watch the post from juggler 66 from Tom Fries from Michael and Brett Norman they got very good information right now uh, jugglers got the Vatican billions by Avril Manhattan he's got many information about uh, times and dates and people and order of Malta and what happens in this world and he actually rules so check that one out. The Vatican Billions by Avril Manhattan presented by Tom Fries. And it's located on the Papacy is the Antichrist YouTube channel. For now, this was it. Just watch the clips and I hope you enjoy. Stay strong in Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters. Maranatha. So, hello my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today I'm going to show you a little bit more about the Jesuits and the Catholic Church in my city, Nijmegen. I'm standing right at the Titus Brandsma Memorial Church. And Titus Brandsma is recently given a sainthood by the Catholic Church, by the Pope, of course. The only one, our saints, are the believers in Jesus Christ, the Almighty in his body. They have no authorization to saint somebody. We all know that. This used to be a Jesuit church. Now it's called the, Tisa, uh, the Titus Brandsma Memorial, as you can see. And we're going to have a walk around. I'm going to show you a little bit. I'm in the city center right now. My apologies if we have a little wind and the voice is not really clear. I'm doing this with my phone. So apologies for that. Here we go. Actually, I was born in this neighborhood. My grandfather and grandmother, they had a bakery a little bit farther down the road. And for the first six years of my life, I lived next to the bakery with my parents. 
so uh, maybe my 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 parent my grandparents went here for church they were roman catholic yeah it's too bad but my parents they raised me free freely and i became a christian seven six years ago when i start doubting what's going on i always had doubts what's going on in this world something wasn't right then you start surging you get in the one truth of movement to another and then you start read the bible and then you start read thing the truth so we have a wall over here there's different quotes on it and I could translate some of them let's see if I see an interesting one Oh, like this one is from Mother Teresa. If we have no peace, it's because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. No, we have forgotten the word of Jesus Christ. This, we've forgotten the Bible. That's, that's how you find peace, spiritual peace. <laughs> this is what St. Francisco said. Make of me an instrument of your peace. Nay, no, no, no. Make Jesus an instrument of your peace. God, that's so called Saint Franciscus. And they got a quote from the here. All kinds of people that are supposed to be. What? Let's see what's this. Seven flames from five continents Africa, Europe, Australia, Asia, Americas, Asia. United into one world peace flame, aka the flame of Lucifer, the enlightened ones. May all beings find true peace. Where is Jesus in this equation? It's typically, you know, Catholic Church, Universal Church. This says, War comes from both sides, also does peace. And there's a quote from Titus Bransma himself. War comes from Satan and peace comes from God. That's my translation. That's supposed to be. And over here they have, like also in the Paris, in the building, on the roundabout, I forgot the name of it. The everlasting flame, the everlasting flame of Lucifer, aka Satan. And I think they also got it on John F. Kennedy's grave and many more places. And it's all symbolic to them. Who they serve. They serve the Antichrist. The Pope in Rome. Who represents the beast. So this was a Jesuit church. I can show you the front a little bit. As you can see in the topper. You can see the sun symbol. You can see a so-called representation of, is it Jesus? I don't know. But of course the Vatican little building, the St. Peter's Cathedral in the front. And all kinds of blasphemies. Where's commandment number two in this people? So yeah, that was the first stop. We're going to the second stop and that's the St. Peter Canisius church and this is still a Jesuit church and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Peter Canisius later he was born also in Nijmegen and you can see on the the arches on the columns the bowl we control this world even if the world is a bowl I don't think so what shape it is I don't know ah, all kinds of symbols and signs all right let's go to the next point see you later so now we are at the city center, it's called the Molenstraat and here we have the recent Jesuit church and as you can see the symbolism in front of it they forgot about commandment number two I think or they just changed it of course you see the pillars in front the Roman structure this is uh, a placement of two churches 
they first had a church in the lower marketplace and it was an illegal church that was in a house there were three churches together so they could escape and they had an, uh, another two churches but they were bombed during the second world war, war so they were destroyed and they moved into this church and i'm gonna go in i'm gonna make an exception for this time because normally i don't go into churches i don't care about buildings jesus christ is a spirit and not a building and to prove that for where two or three are together in my name there i am in the midst of them and that's matthew 18 12, 20 so he's not in the building he's in the spirit he's in your body the holy spirit so as you also have to read the bible in the spirit and not literally as many people do uh, let's go in it's gonna be an evil time but I want to show you this, so we're going to go in. As you can see, there's a little bit of a picture of Peter Canisius. The moment I have to unloosen my dog. There's also a Maria Chapel in here. And who was Peter Canisius? Peter Canisius was born 1521 and died 1597. He was the first Jesuit, Dutch Jesuit, and he was educated by Pierre Favre, also called Peter Faber, who was one of the three founders of the Jesuits. I think it was four, but on Wikipedia it says three. So I don't know sure if that's correct information. He was shooted in the Trent. He had two sessions there, Concilium of Trent, the Council of Trent, sorry. So he wrote also Anathemas and he was the Contra Reformation. He was there when it all happened. And he translated the Catechismus into German because there were too many Germans who were becoming Protestant according to them. And then he wrote it in German so the people could see and read what it was all about. And he also did re write some of the Catechismus on his own. There's a statue of him in the city, we're going there later. And then we can see clearly, clearly who he represents. He was a confidant of Ferdinand I, the emperor, the Roman Catholic emperor. And he... Let me see, I can not read my own handwriting. Oh yeah, he defeated uh, the Ottoman Empire at Vienna, Ferdinand I. And he represented the Jesuits, or Jesuits in all countries for them to pick up a stronghold. And he was a big supporter of the Roman Catholic and uh, of the Contra-Reformation like they all are, the emperors. In later life, he became the Bishop of Vienna. And he said, there are many ways to Christ. And for him, it was Mary. So that's another lie. There's only one way, Jesus Christ to God. So, okay. That's a little bit background information on who is St. Peter of Canisius. Of course, he's not a real saint, but that's what they call them. Let's go inside for a prayer or a conversation. Oh, maybe we can have a conversation. We can see all the relics over here. Commandment number two. Where did you go? This is one of his statues. That is what he's supposed to look like. Of course, you know that his clothes were all black because he was a Jesuit uh, black nice color for people and he's not carrying the Bible probably he's probably carrying his catechismus they don't respect the Bible they don't respect Jesus Christ they're all liars well for this once I'm gonna go in people go ahead, chief oh, I have to wait for my dog come chief 
So it always smells like death in churches. You know, when I was younger, I went to churches and it always smelled like bomb or or death. It's like a smell. It's yeah, something really bad. Look at this. Look at these blasphemies. Commandment number two. I see everywhere. Commandment number two. So that's the main center over there. Still a Jesuit church, people. There's still many Jesuits in Nijmegen. They have a resting house of Jesuits. We have a university. It's not more, not anymore called a Catholic university, but it still is, of course. The old liars. This is his breastplate. He was a son of the mayor of Nijmegen before he became a Jesuit. Because a Jesuit does not have any uh, personality of himself. So he is a Berinda Abkadavor. He's a Catover. He only listens to his superior, the Black Pope. It says Peter Canisius and Peter Canisius and his catechisms. Let's see over here more paintings. And over there. Lots of symbolism in the windows. Was that supposed to be? No idea. Is this Kadishis also? Look at this. Is this the, the where they baptize the kids? Where they put them? How can you baptize the kids? Where is that in the Bible? You'll be baptized if you believe in Christ. A kid doesn't know about Christ yet. You have to educate him. You have to educate your kids in all lives and beliefs you have to be a strong man in this day and age to educate your kids and jesus christ because uh, satan is all around look at this burn a light oh what's the light again lucifer the enlightened one the fallen one aka we call him satan like the bible calls him so we see the big sun symbolism over there because they are sun worshippers. Maybe this is where you have to uh, grab your uh, transubstantiation uh, cookie. Eh? But blaspheme God and condemn yourself with the cookie representing God or Jesus. Sorry, it's insane this with the candles and the main part in the middle. I'm a little bit too far to see what's actually on it. But it looks gruesome. Like the, the the big the top is of course a representation of Bill or Nimrod. And the bells are also heathen and it's all heathen. It's all from Babylon and from Egypt and they took it all over. Medo Persia. They just Christianized heathenism. Constantine another way here is Maria and supposed to be Jesus of course this is Tammuz and Nimrod the moon god and the reincarnated sun god that is not Jesus Jesus is a grown man he's sitting on the right side of God waiting to judge this world he's no kid anymore and Maria is dead waiting for his son, for her son in the, in the flesh to come back of course Maria She's not a saint. She's yeah, she is a saint because she believes in Jesus Christ, but she's not a saint like the Church of the Roman Catholic tells her, tells you that she is. She's dead and buried. She's no intermediator between Jesus and God. Here he is. No, that's not him. Here is somebody. They think is Jesus laying on the tomb, and there is Knishis again. And there is his another statue. Wow, they really love their Canisius. There's also a Canisius College. We're going there maybe today, I don't know yet. And there's a hospital. Actually, I was helped in that hospital because I've had a heart, heart problem. But do the people know? They don't know who Canisius really was. Hey, the sun symbol behind his head, of course. Who is this? Let me see his name. 
What's his name? Girardus Margiela. I never heard of him before. Father Martyr Frans van der Lucht. Never heard of him before. Robert Rigaud. See the symbol on the top of that. The Knights Templars. Swiss. The Swiss sign. Oh, and there we have Titus Bronsker at the church where we were before. Also the same symbol. Do the Knights of Malta also do this symbol? I think so, yeah. Look at him with his smirk. Actually, I feel sorry for these people because they never will know who Julie Jesus is. What's this? H. Anna learns her daughter Maria to pray. I have no idea what they mean with this. It's, uh, I don't know what that is. They have a big origin over there because they love their grave down music. And look who it is here. The Holy Bleeding Heart. The Catholic action in Jesus that you have to die for him by killing other people who are Protestants, who believe in the real Jesus. This is not Jesus. He's got long hair. This looks like Borgia, you know, the painting that they sculpted Jesus ever after. Long hair was a blasphemy by God, so it's not Jesus at all. The holy heart of Jesus, yeah. And look, of course, the hand symbol. And there we have Mr. Demon himself, the blackest of the black, Loyola, Ignatius of Loyola. And there's a little sign, let's see, it's from Wikipedia. Now let's see, one explanation is of the IHS in hoc signo, in this sign you will conquer as a representation of the dream Constant the Great had, the Roman Emperor. Now that's not another explanation, this is the explanation. This is what they use, because they have different explanations of this. They are a military order. A priest, military order, contra-reformation. They're liars, they're deceivers, they're murderers. They lead the Inquisition, and they killed so many people, and they still are going for the Agenda 230. NWO total control world. Now, how are they gonna do it? I don't know, but they are right on schedule. They always create the left and the right, the Gillian dialect. We all know this. If you know my channel and Juggler 66, thank you, Juggler, always for your work. Brett and Brett Norman and Michael in Germany and of course, we have Richard Bennett and Tom Fries, who's doing good work for many, many years. Well, I haven't learned much about all these brothers. Thank you for your work, brothers. Who is this? Antonius of Padua. Well, it's a grown man carrying a child. Hmm. What am I to think of that when you know the history of the church? Should I say it out loud? Nah. You know what I mean. This is the Maria Capel. Maria, she was a good human. She was chosen, but she is not alive anymore, people. She cannot do anything for you. You cannot pray for her. Of course, we know it's the goddess Semiramis. Babylon religion. Here it is, people. What's commandment number two, people? I've written it down. I'm going to read it for you one moment. I got it on paper. So maybe these people might heard it. One moment, please. Where did I leave it? It's over here. I see. Thou shalt not make unto thy any graven image or any likeness of anything that it is in heaven above or that is in the church beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, 
nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers of the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate them. And that's what God says about this blasphemy. But it's up to you people. The Pope is the Antichrist, the biblical, prophetic, and historic Antichrist. And his Jesuits are his army. Wake up, people, before it's too late. Jesus is coming. All right, let's go, Jiva. So that's what I got to say. Never ending these chairs again. So you have the signals on the ground also. Yeah, let's see symbols over here. I don't know what they actually represent. Let's see. Well, that's about it. Over symbols over there, like an arc. So now you know what a Jesuit church looked like and all the blasphemy. And I'm shaking on my feet right now because it makes me a little bit mad. Well, anyway, we're gonna go to the next stop. It's a, it's a statue of Peter Canisius, and then you will actually see very clear who he represents. Mother not. So, to give you some more background on the city of Nijmegen, it was founded 2000 years ago by the Romans. It's the oldest city in the Netherlands. The piece of Nijmegen was signed here. And as you can see, this is the old townhouse. It was partly destroyed in 1944 with the bombings. The English thought it was some German town. Yeah, so they just think that and they let their bombs go. I don't think so. Of course, there's more to it. I don't know exactly, but but that happens. Just not, that just happens. There's many symbols again. You have uh, Charlemagne the Great, who had a citadel over here, a big castle. There's also some Roman guys over here inside of the porch. You have you got the double-headed eagle, which stands for Rome, of course, and this is where they do weddings. It's the old townhouse, and you can see symbolism all over, and so-called important people. They got the, as you can see over there, on the porch, the old porch, they got the sun symbolism. And it also dates around the year 1500, I think. So yeah, that's the old townhouse. And this is the place where they had the castle Charlemagne, all called Charles the Great, living in memorial in Nijmegen nog steeds. He was uh, of course crowned by the Pope, so you know who the root power had, like all the Roman emperors. There's not much left of it, as you can see they have a little bit of a chapel over there, you can still have weddings sign to see what it looks like of course there's a cross on there Tammuz cross and this is what the chapel looked like and still looks like Emperor Frederick Barbarossa built the castle on this hill in 1155 and its construction material was used from the castle of Charlemagne which stood on this spot. In 1796 the Falkhof, that's the name, was sold by the province to be used as building material. All that was saved were the two chapels from the ch castle. The chapel named after Charlemagne is dedicated to St. Nicholas. Oh, okay, here we have the Roman Catholics again. It was built around 1000 on the pattern of the palace chapel in Aix-la-Chapelle. The present form of the chapel is the result of rebuilding around 1400. It's called the Falcon Court. Well, that's a nice spot to hang around, you know, get some leisure. 
It's a nice day, it's summer. We have a really good summer this year. Thanks to the harp system yeah. and the weather modification systems they have. Can I go in there by dog? So I'm not going in there. Well, it looks like every other chapel. And if you see this bridge, this bridge is the old bridge, also in the movie A Bridge Too Far with the Operation Market Garden, where they thought they were liberated from the Germans, but they had a big mistake. And we had the hunger winter after that. And on the other side, they're building a complete new, complete new city neighborhood with around 30,000 people, I think. It used to be a little village, but you know, the new people from all around the world coming here. They are invited. Come here, get free money, get whatever you want. Be a good Muslim. Be a good coexist movement, Christian. Ah, this is why the reason why this city was built is next to the river, like all ancient cities. And in the distance, you can see the city of Parnam with the buildings. And that is the second city of the state. And it's also the capital of the state. I don't know why, because Nijmegen is a bigger city. But yeah, well, here they can have it. And this is some painting, Stefano, there's some girl, some girl was important in history, whatever, you know. She's dead now. So let's go to the other ruin. Yeah, also the... On this ridge also stood the Romans when they looked at the enemies because it's a little bit higher. Dutch Holland is a very flat country, so if you're on a high spot, you can see everything. Over there is the ruin. They have festivals over here also sometimes. And what else can I tell you about this? You can look it up on the internet. You know who Charlemagne was. That's why it's also called the Emperor City, the Kaiserstadt, because Emperor Charlemagne had a residence here. Well, as you can see, you see the Roman columns, or are they Greek? I don't know. Supposed to be statues in here. But that's all that was left of the big castle. As I read before, they all took it down for other building projects. It's a shame. But you know, I can do nothing about it. Hey, the two pillars, Joachim and Boas. Where have we read that before? Mm -hmm. Masonry, everybody. Oh, of course, the sun symbol in the middle. All right, let's have a walk to the next sighting. Be right back. And where would the city be without an uh, obelisk? The Phallus of Nimrod. Every city's got one. It's a resp representation of power. They call it a sundial, but of course. You have the esoteric and the exoteric. Let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. And on there, on the bottom, is the original stoning from the Roman time. And I think you, know, you can see it's good because of the shade. There is some emperor on it, as I read before some time. They're not even put something. Oh, how are you gonna waste 
your heritage. Put it out in the open. Not that I, not that I think it's good anyway, but if you want to keep it, put something around it. And this is original Roman structure. An obelisk. Alright, let's go to the next one. So, here we are at Hanna Park. This is the statue of Peter Canisius, made by Don Dupuy in 1926. As you can see, his name is on it, and that's a representation as we see for earlier in his church. He has made a symbol over there with his hands, and with that symbol, I want to quote a Bible verse. Count the number of the beast, for it is a number, the number it is of a man, and its number is six and three, four and six. That's not actually the whole Bible verse, but you get the meaning. If you want to read the whole Bible verse, let me see, it's in Revelation 13, 18. That's the Bible verse, if you want to read it for good, for the real word of God. So 666, and let's see, what is he putting up with his sign as we walk closer? You can see his hands, what's he doing with his hands? He is making the three score six hand sign, so who does he obey? Satan people, he represents. The study of Satan, the Antichrist, Pope, biblically, prophetically, and historically. He's nothing more than a stooge, a minion, and the people, <laughs> they adore them. I was just in a church like I showed you, and I started talking to the people. And I asked them, do you read the Bible, sir or miss? And they said, no, I don't read the Bible. I said, what are you doing in the church then? Yeah, I don't often go to the church. Okay. Do you know what's in the Bible? No, I don't want to read it. Okay. So I put some quotes in there. If they, I asked them if they are the Jesuits and they just pretended they didn't hear me. I called the Pope the Antichrist. They didn't hear me. I said, you are see but you can't see. You are here but you can't hear. They didn't hear me. They didn't want to know nothing at all. Somebody wants to buy a Saint Christoffel. I said, do you know who the real saints are? No Pope can make a saint. The saint is somebody who is in Jesus Christ in his body, not somebody who is sainted by some liar in Rome. And look at the book, down at his feet. May that be the Bible? They contempt the Bible. It's still on the list of forbidden books. So he's making the 666 sign and he's standing upon the Bible. Well. That must say enough to everybody to know who this man was. So I'm gonna have a walk around. Later my, we might go to the Canisius College. It's not so far from here. But oh there's a little plaque over here. What does it say? Born in Nijmegen 8 May 1521, died in Freiburg, that's Germany, on 21st December of 1597. Declared a saint and risen to church. Let's uh, later on again. Uh, uh, church, de, de, uh, church teacher, church teacher, sorry. Got the right translation. 21st of May 1925. So we have two saints from Nijmegen, Titus Brandma and Peter Canisius, well, they call them saints, of course. Because we know who saints are, I just told you. Yeah, if you do a good job for uh, Satan, you get your sainthood and your statue and your fame and your money. Okay, later on we're gonna go tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna go, but later for you, of course, and uh, YouTube movies. I'm gonna go to the resting place of the Jesuits. It's called Aqua Viva. And I'm going to go to Bergmanium, the College of the Jesuits, which is now the University of Nijmegen, before the Catholic University of Nijmegen. And I'm going to tell you something about it. I did some research. And for now, 
this was oh you can see the old city wall over in the background but for now this was uh, this was it then I'm going to Canisius College and then I had the city of course there's lots of more to see with all kinds of symbols but I'm not going to show you everything all right Maranata